the chicken and the low fat poultry that we're putting on our salads with the dressing on the side might not help with our unexplained weight gain. Yes. So chicken, I call the dirty bird. <laughs> As you know, it, it's gotten dirty in the way that we grow our chickens. And so why am I such a, a, a megaphone for the dirty bird in terms of it not being on your plate? Well, uh, many of the functional practitioners, uh, including Asprey and others, are saying, hey, look, this has omega-6 inflammatory uh, fatty acids, and those aren't good because they oxidize in our system, and that's bad. But what is really the differentiator with the dirty bird, and this is where I believe I'm pioneering, is that the crowding conditions of the chicken have made these amyloid-like structures in their tissue. And amyloids are indigestible proteins. And so why does that have to do with fat <laughs> if we're talking protein? Well, because proteins have, are broken down, our body takes proteins and then they're broken down into amino acids, which are then recombined for, guess what? Sugar metabolism and insulin metabolism. The amino acid utilization has to do with how we then use glucogenesis, which has sugar, our sugar balance and our insulin balance. And so when these, it takes 5,300 amino acids to, so we eat a protein, they get all broken up, the amino acids, and then they have to recombine in a certain chain of 5,300 to make one little muscle fiber strand. And we know that muscle will burn fat, right? So if you can't break those down and recombine them into a muscle fiber, you're gonna have more fat than muscle. And then if you can't combine those amino acids for glucogenesis, which is how you manage sugar, then the body's going to go hypoglycemic, meaning low blood sugar, which then what's the body going to do in response? It's going to release cortisol, which I call the dirty cupcake and or epinephrine. Both of those are stress hormones because we're hypoglycemic and what is stress? What does epinephrine do? It raises our blood sugar and so does cortisol. So it's a, it's a body's balancing mechanism to get sugar back in because you're hypoglycemic because you couldn't break down the protein because you couldn't make those amino acids go to glucogenesis. Well, then what happens? I call it the dirty cupcake. It's like eating a cupcake every hour and it's dirty because it's not really even tasting good. You're stressed. So that dirty cupcake is going to then create fat. Also over time, that fat then becomes what is insulin. Insulin is the fat storage hormone. When you're not breaking down fat, now you're not breaking down insulin. And when insulin is not broken down, it's going to be carried around your middle section. And middle section and girth is really related to heart disease, which is the number one killer of men and women in the United States. So you have this like massive trajectory. So the chicken, I have not had, honestly, with Girl Scout honor, I've not had one piece of chicken in almost seven years. So we can do this, folks. It's easy. I love my food. Tonight I'm having a white fish with some beautiful salad and some roasted squash and some amazing uh, figs for dessert. So that's going to be my, my dessert. Um, so, and I'm going to feel very satiated and wild meat is the differentiator. So what can you do instead of chicken? You can do Cornish game hen. You can do duck pheasant. It's almost chicken. Like I, I do roasted pheasant and you can't tell it's not chicken. Um, the Cornish game hen is a really in most grocers and they don't seem to have the same burden of the amyloids. And we know why, because we've proven it through our through our client con, uh, tr uh, transformations today. And I was telling Sarah before we went on, on screen that I had a client, she came to see me, she'd been researching. She's a massive documentarist producer, very well known. And she'd had an autoimmune condition for 20 years and two additional autoimmune conditions for five years. And she was eating chicken and broccoli and chicken also will turn on viruses. And these autoimmune conditions race on a viral load. So in one visit, She's lost 10 pounds and she's no longer has three autoimmune conditions. Now, how is that possible? Because we gave her amino acids an opportunity to be used because we stopped that, which was not being able to be broken down in the system. So that's one thing. So chicken is the dirty bird. Now fat metabolism. So this is where keto gets really tricky, especially for women. If you're not able to break down fats, then taking in a high fat diet will also strain the liver in all hormones, which are fat soluble. And then that estrogen is going to be worn. That insulin is going to be worn. That cortisol is going to be worn. So we have to know what our genetics are and then use fat emulsifiers such as salt, bile salts, 
taurine, um, charcoal, vitamin C, things that are emulsifiers that will, uh, betaine that will break down fats. So we need to understand our genetic blueprint to understand that. Um, and then you ask me, why are we having this unexplained weight gain? Well, the spike protein. Real quick, Terry, before we get into that, mm -hmm. I want to stop and say, ask. So you're talking about when we're eating the amyloid proteins, it's creating the dirty cupcake by releasing our stress hormones. Yes, we're all being stressed, right? We've got fear and all this stuff, but you're talking about just from eating the chicken, the stress hormones are going up. Not to mention the mental and emotional stress that is raising those stress hormones as well. And then those proteins from that chicken that we think we're going to take in after we have a big workout in the gym to go feed our bicep muscles, they're not even going to our bicep muscles. They're not even being broken down. So I just wanted to confirm that and emphasize that. So what we think we're doing is not even doing what we're doing, plus all the damage it is doing on top of that. Yes. And so one of the, I worked with a very well-known athlete who went back into the ring in 2020 to put, to do a, a champion boxing fight and his body, we made him a wild and he had his amino acid. You might know who he is. I'm not going to mention him by name, but he's considered one of the greatest boxers of all time. And when we made him a wild Italian, his, amino acid utilization went through the roof. And I was, I was his metabolic expert on his team and he was punching like he was 25 at age 53. So that was part of the deal. And so his amino acid utilization was optimal and he tried all sorts of diets as well. And most recently, Anthony Kiedis, uh, the lead singer of the Red Hot Chili Peppers went uh, uh, viral, I went viral, uh, respectively on Joe Rogan when Anthony Kiedis as a guest mentioned that he'd had all these issues, uh, with not being able to heal from injuries and had tried all diets. And when he went wild, it was, he said it was the fastest, the sharpest, the, the, the most metal sharpness, the, the most agility he's ever had in his life. And he's 61. And so he went wild and the amino acid utilization for him went through the roof. Not only did he get become the best shape of his life, but everything else, all the inflammatory agents that were keeping him from being his best self evaporated. And so he no longer eats chicken. <laughs> and so these are, you know, two major players, one by name, one by not, uh, that when we changed their profile of eating, they became the best versions of themselves and became more cut than ever. Uh, yeah. So broke down, you know, anything that they had. So, so we effectively maximized the human potential when we look and seek to understand how is that body breaking down proteins and fats.